There's a lot of reasons why America's broken. In your view, why broken? It's broken. No, it ain't our view. It's the view of the Bible. That's right. Okay. The reason why this, he just told you, the reason why this place is broke is because what it did to the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Look up the history. How Three long have you lived in, in Thailand? Uh, I've been there five years. Five, five years? Ooh. Did nice. you ever move back to the U.S.? Uh, it's a good question. You know, for this video, I was going to tell them at the end of the video if I'm kind of homesick and if I would come back. A lot of things about U.S. are broken. How does the U.S. get fixed? You know, what about the, all the money that we send out to all these other places, but yet our people are struggling? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, we got people that are millionaires and billionaires and all that stuff, but there's a huge amount of the population that doesn't have shit. Thank you okay? You. Yeah, I'm good now. Yeah. Thanks a lot for waiting. Hey, don't be fucking dumb. All right, leave her. So that's what a lot of YouTubers are doing. They come down here, they see guys yelling and cussing and saying don't be filming and it's really made for YouTube and to be sensational that's not what this video is about it's kind of like a youtubers formula they come to America they go to the worst part of the country to these cities where all this stuff is going on all the homelessness and it's all sensational to get views and all that stuff but that's not what this video is about this video is about perspective it's about me living in Thailand the last five years I've only been home twice during that time it's my second time home and there are certain things that I really appreciate about the U.S. now. And there's other things I really appreciate about Thailand right now after being away for so long. So this video is about both of those things. And also, it's about if I'm homesick and if I would consider moving back to the U.S. But let me start with this. The things that I really appreciate about the U.S. this trip back. The first thing is this. Uh, everywhere I've been in the country, pretty much, whether it was Raleigh, Austin, Cleveland. There's America's just great people. They're I think they're the most friendly people in the world. And they're the most, how do you say, authentic and genuine. So they're very willing to have conversations with you. And there's this connection that goes on. Now for some things after being in Thailand for five years, some things I'm really aware of about when I come home that I really appreciate about Thailand is this. One of the biggest things I don't like about being home, it's so car dependent. Everywhere you go, you gotta be in a car. And I'm finding I'm finding that I'm in a car two or three hours every day, and I just feel isolated. I feel lonely when I'm in a car. It doesn't feel like that great interaction I have when I'm around Thailand where I really don't need a car. I could be on the motorbike, and there's a lot of interaction between people. Even if I sometimes don't speak the language, I still feel this human connection. The other thing I'm more aware of this time back home is just how expensive things are. I don't know how people survive, how the common guy in America is making it, because everything here is double or triple what it is in Thailand, whether it's uh, going out to lunch, going out for dinner, or going out for a beer, the price is triple, sometimes four times as much. Uh, sometimes when you even go to park a car, it's gonna be $65, $70 a night. Uh, that will get you a really beautiful hotel room in Thailand. When I tell people I'm living in Thailand, most Americans, no matter the education level, they really don't know much about the world. They don't know where Thailand is, a lot of them. Uh, some get it confused with the Philippines or some other part of the world. And I don't dare pull out an almanac or a globe and ask them to point to it. Uh, they just, Americans don't travel much, so their perspective uh, is pretty narrow. I will say, though, I do notice another thing uh, this trip back. There's just a kind of a feeling of heaviness, not gloom, but no matter where I've been on this trip, people just seem a little fatigued and worn out. And it might be from all the polarization and the constant debate that happens in the US. Gonna kinda exit from this scene. Gonna keep walking around this little neighborhood and then share with you if I'm homesick or anything or if I'd be willing to move back to the US. And I'm gonna share with you the last item that I'm uh, probably most aware of this trip as far as perspective between life in Thailand and life in the US. What's up, man? How are you? You're good? We're making a video about uh, the differences between Thailand and the U.S. Oh, it's no comparison. Why? This country's a shit old, man. You, can, you see what San Francisco looks like? A lot of things about U.S. are broken. How does the U.S. get fixed? I'll tell you how the U.S. is going to get fixed. The U.S. is going to get fixed by being destroyed in World War III. Thermonuclear destruction is coming to the land of America, according to the Holy Bible. It's prophesied all throughout the scriptures. The Lord is about to wipe this place off the earth. There is no fix in America. It has done the crime, and it has to do the time, according to the Holy Bible. So this is what's going to fix America. Nuclear fire. And it's going to happen via World War III. You see what's going over there in the land of um, um, 
uh, the Middle East. You had just had Iran. They attacked. Um, they did an attack on um, Israel. That's according to biblical prophecy. That's that's, that's leading up to what's going to happen, which is going to usher in the downfall of this place, America. You know. There's a lot of reasons why America's broken. In your view, why broken? It's broken. No, it ain't our view. It's the view of the Bible. That's right. Okay. The reason why this, they just told you, the reason why this place is broken is because what it did to the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Look up the history. Yep. Look up the history it's of Napa like County, karma. man. It's karma, right? Yeah. He said they did the crime, they got to do the time. No so doubt. because this place is responsible for all these atrocities against the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, the ones who you ignorantly call God and Jesus Christ, they're going to destroy this place, man. That's right. You can't fix it. Yeah, there is no fixing something that's uh, broken. It's never. It's, we would have healed Babylon, but it cannot be healed. Babylon the Great mm -hmm. is known as America in the Bible. It cannot be healed. This place is corrupt. It's evil. It's wicked because a man of sin establishes this uh, country that way. So the Lord Yahweh Shai, who the world equally calls Jesus Christ, is coming back to redeem His people, the Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. But starts with His chosen, the elect, the 144,000. He's going to redeem them and save them out of this place and bring the ultimate destruction to this place. You know? Matter of fact, let's get some scriptures. Jeremiah 51 to 7. Babylon have been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. Yeah, Babylon, have, this was, a.k.a. America, has been a golden cup in the Lord's hand which made all the earth drunken, meaning they spread their wicked ways, their philosophies to the, to the other nations, the earth, which is leading everybody to death. You know, your democracy, you know, uh, the, the ways of America is death. The no. nations have drunken right. of her wine, therefore the nations are mad. Yeah, the nations have drunken of our wine, therefore the nations are mad. If you want to sum it all up, the problem of the earth is Esau Edom, the so-called white man. He's the problem of the earth, and he's going to be addressed by the power of the Bible. Yahweh Bashimah Shai, the king of terrorists. The creator of life itself is going to address the problem of the earth. Continue. Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. How for her, take bomb for her pains. America is the land of confusion. It's the only place where they push where two men can get together, two women can get together, where that brings forth death, you know? It's the only place that goes against what the Bible stands for. And that's why it's going to be taken out in the way it's going to be taken out in such a brutal manner. There's no, as scriptures tell you in Revelation 18, in one hour, so great riches has come to naught. The Most High is going to destroy America as long as it took to build, build this place up. In one hour, this place is going to be wiped out. In the sixth chapter, so my thought on this, as we were walking around this part of the city in San Fran, is everyone has their point of view, everyone has their perspective, but I do feel when I'm in Thailand that the values of Buddhism, it seems to be working. There's just more joyfulness, there's more harmony, there's more respect for each other, and when you get to America, there's some polarization and there's a lot of exploitation. If you look back, and what they're talking about really is what happened to the Native Americans, what happened to the African Americans. The country was founded on some bloody and some pretty uh, sad and tough things. So that's what they're talking about. But there is a lot of this going on in America. The, some anger, some polarization, some who knows what. But you don't have that in Thailand. And I think a lot of it is because of Buddhism. Just the values, the harmony the respect, um, the principles of Buddhism, I believe, have a more peacefulness in the culture compared to what we see in America right now. Here we got a can, it seems like the only shop open. You guys seem like the only shop open today. Yes, oh, sir. Yeah, we, yeah? we, we stay active. Yeah? yeah? How are things down here? Oh, not too bad, you know, like uh, the neighborhood here, it's been a little crazy here and there, but you know, it's slowly starting to clean up. Things are being regulated a little bit more. We're starting to move people along and stuff like that. There was, when I first took over this location, there was hundreds of homeless people, people out here on drugs, all kinds of stuff. So we got the community together. We got the police, the law enforcement, the city and things to move things along. And now, you know, the neighborhood's starting to look a little bit better, you know, like, but still it yeah. gets a little spicy. Now, I, I haven't been home in a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And I feel like last time I was here in San Francisco, um, not you, that it's from on here. I'm from Napa, California. Nice. But uh, last time seemed a little where, bit not where do you so stay great. Now, in Thailand. Thailand. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So I have a little different perspective about things coming back home. Yeah. So things are better now than last year. I would say yeah, a little bit. You know, yeah. 
not a huge difference, but you know, it's slowly starting to come together. You know, this, this place has an open air drug market law, so it makes it very difficult to get anything like positive done because there's so many like people on addiction and dealing with that. And the city doesn't care about that. Like, you know what I mean? They don't, they don't, law enforcement doesn't do anything about it. If you get arrested, you're out the same day. It doesn't matter how much drugs you have on you or what the situation is. So that makes it difficult, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you got people out here that are selling fentanyl and, you know, all the other things and yeah. like getting people addicted and pulling them away from the actual natural healing medicine and, you know, getting them poisoned, man. Get them. So how does this get fixed? How, do, how does California fix it? <sighs> that's, a, that's a very complex question. Um, it starts from the top down, you know what yeah. I mean? And the thing is, is we need to redo the whole entire model of the government and how they do things, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Also, they got to listen to the citizens a little bit more, you know what I mean? They don't yeah. do that at all. Like, it's all about the top guys. We're going to yeah. share our secrets and we're going to do this and we're going to do that. But you don't really see anything like spill out into the community in a positive way. You know, there's all these vacant buildings and all this sure. stuff. Why don't we have homeless shelters more? You know what I'm saying? Why don't we have transition centers more that can actually help these people? Outreach mental programs. Mental health, right? Yeah, mental health is huge. Like, like that's, that should be a topic of the election. That, that should be number one. You know what I mean? But they don't care about that. They're, They're trying talking to... about things like the border, which is an issue. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But mental health should be an issue. Yeah, yeah. You know, what about the, all the money that we send out to all these other places, but yet our people are struggling? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, we got people that are millionaires and billionaires and all that stuff, but there's a huge amount of the population that doesn't have shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. and like... That's unfortunate that you can be way up here, but can't. Sh nobody can help anybody else. You know what I mean? Like so. So how much you got to pay him to carry the gun? That is confidential. <laughs> <laughs> What's the thing you like most about America? They say it's the land of opportunity. You know, like, and you do have the opportunity to do anything you want if you apply yourself. You know, you got to actually try though. And there's a lot of people who don't try. You know, like, so me, I come from nothing. I'm an anomaly. I shouldn't even be alive or be here right now. But because it is the land of opportunity, I've found an opportunity and taken it. And, you know, the scales are starting to tip drastically to where, you know, the people are eventually going to freak out, you know, and it's going to be a big, big, big problem, you know. But also, we're a little timid, I think, too, you know, like, and, you know, they kind of fall into place a little easier than they should. You know, so that's the unfortunate thing is the people up top don't care about the people at the bottom and there's no in between, you know, like it's it's either our way or the highway, you know, like. But you, what do you know about Thailand? So, I don't know much about it, but just like him, I have a few friends that live out there yeah. and they, they say it's beautiful. Yeah. But what do you think about, what do you think the difference is between here and Thailand? Um, number one thing, number one thing uh, for both countries in perspective, I will say that one, there's a beauty to the struggle that America's going through right now. It's so, because of the different, everything's so different. The people, it's very diverse. Whereas in Asia, a lot of countries are more homogenous. And we're just like friction, but usually something good comes out of it. The uh, biggest difference about being in Thailand is the peacefulness and warm heartedness. And I feel like America has kind of lost that. Americans are nice, like look at us having a friendly conversation but we don't have that uh, kind of warm heartedness for our neighbor, you know? And in Thailand, they do. They welcome the neighborhood to community. Yeah. That's not the case here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a lot of segregation, even though that's supposed to be not the thing anymore, but this is the one country that I know for sure, like you might've been born here, but if you're from, Mexico, if your family's from Mexico, you're Mexican, you're not American. Yeah. If you're from Asia, you're Asian, you know what I mean? If you're from Russia, you're Russian, you're not American, but you're born here. On applications, it has all these different selections. There's nothing that says United States or America on there. I always check other and I write in American, because that's what the fuck I am, I'm an American, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I'm a human, you yeah. know, even more than that. You know, we're all the same people, that's you right. know, like, but for some reason, We've got it messed up in our heads that we need to be against each other yeah, or it's about the land. Polar, polarization, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, it's the, the, it's, And it shouldn't be that way. No, we should all get along. What happens when they actually come back? Why don't you know we I mean? uh, <laughs> be more united, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, like, yeah. you know, there are other beings out there, I believe. And what happens when they all come back? You That's know what right. I mean? And they're like, oh, you guys can't even get along with each other. This yeah. is going to be a cakewalk for us. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. we're all the same. You know, we all come the same, same genes, same DNA, same everything, you know, like, That's right. but unfortunately we separate ourselves and segregate ourselves and want to take from each other. Oh, land is more important than the actual being a fucking human. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, so hopefully someday we get it together, you know, Good like, man. but this, this is the hey, one place. Thank yeah. you for your thoughts.
Yeah. How long have you lived in, in Thailand? Uh, I've been there five years. Five years? Ooh, Did nice. you ever move back to the U.S.? Uh, it's a good question. You know, for this video, I was going to tell them at the end of the video if I'm kind of homesick and if I would come back. And I'm going to tell them that. Uh, so to answer your question, possibly. Uh, is it going to happen right now? I'm going to save that for them in a few minutes. Uh, but, yeah, you know, I, I'll say this. Uh, after being away for five years, there are certain things about the U.S. I really appreciate. And I really have a, kind of a fondness for that maybe I overlooked before. You know, like the, just how we're just a diverse culture. We're so mixed in thoughts and we have that kind of freedom. But there's a good side and a bad side to that. Facts. Yeah. Facts. Yeah. All right, fellas. See you. Thank All you. Right. Thank yes, you. Sir. Yeah. Have a good day. Right, sir. Too, Where do we sign your blood? Uh, it's your the book? borderless office. The borderless office. Okay. okay. Yeah, the, the borderless, borderless office. office. Yeah. Perfect. All right. All right. Thank you guys. See you. All right. Have a good one. That was the next topic, the final topic actually that I was going to share about something that I noticed about being in the U.S. The polarization, the friction, and he brought it up, and I think that's one thing that uh, my perspective of how I feel about being back in the U.S. after being in Thailand. It's just like he's saying, there's that friction, that polarization. That's the last item. For the rest of this video, I'm gonna pop up the green screen behind me and just talk about some other little subtle things I noticed about being home that kind of contrast with my life in Thailand. And there, a lot of these are kind of lighthearted. So let me start here. And at final the end of thoughts that and some final perspective about the differences between the U.S. and Thailand. I'll start here, that, that scene behind me, that happens in a lot of American cities, but it seems like when I'm living in Thailand, if I start watching YouTube, if I watch one of those videos that portrays America negatively, I start getting a whole rabbit hole of videos that start to make America look really, really bad. But the reality is not. It just depends where you go. In most of the major cities, you have scenes like this, but in much of the country, it still feels really good. First thing about perspective between Thailand and the U.S. is the service industry. The service industry in America sucks. It's terrible. And I don't know what it is, but when you walk into some places, say like this Chipotle, it just has a feeling of gr grimy, griminess. The people working there feel grimy. And uh, it is what it is, but it wasn't like that five years ago. It just feels like everywhere you go in America right now, there's no pride. And it reminds me of a quote from the movie American Gangster. I'm gonna pop it up on the screen and read it to you. It says, this is what's wrong with America. It's gotten so big, you just can't find your way. The grocery store on the corner is now a supermarket. The candy store is a McDonald's. Where's the pride of ownership? Where's the personal service? And I feel like there's just no pride of ownership. There's no personal service. America's lost its way there, but on Thailand, on the other hand, it's still great. I fly Southwest Airlines when I'm hopping between different cities in the US, and then when in Thailand, I usually fly Air Asia, and the experience on Air Asia to me is just better. I'm showing you a scene from Southwest Airlines, and uh, now I'm gonna show you a scene from Air Asia. Just overall, my experience when flying either Air Asia or the Japanese Airlines, it's a better experience than when I'm flying American Airlines. When I started this video, I told you that in some cases, prices are two, three, and four times uh, in the US compared to Thailand. This is an exception. Here's a massage place in the airport in the US. And for a two hour massage, they want over $260. I'm flashing that up on the screen right now. And then as soon as I land in Bangkok, I go get a two hour massage for less than $30. So in this case, the price increase between the US and Thailand, it's almost eight times or nine times more in the US compared to Thailand when getting a massage in the airport. And the massage in Thailand is really good. That in fact, to me, is one of the amenities of Thailand that keeps me living there is all the good body work and massage because as we get older, as I get older, uh, I find that I need that massage to keep me active. One thing I noticed and was more aware of this trip back to the US is just how significant the role of sport plays in American society. As much as I love sport, uh, now that I've been away for five years, I just have a different perspective on it. It doesn't play as huge of a role in my life as it once did but I still notice in the US, it's just a huge, I don't know if it's a distraction, but there's a thing called pacifier. Things that society gives us to kind of make us go to sleep and ignore the real issues. And some people say that could be sport or holidays. And I feel like in America, in a lot of ways, sport acts as a pacifier and makes people distracted 
from some of the bigger issues that are going on. I still love sport. I still love sporting events. It's just not, it just doesn't play the big role in my life like it once did before I moved to Thailand. Final thing for this video is, am I homesick? Would I consider moving back to the US? Not right now. Base for me is still Thailand because it comes down to quality of life and I still feel better physically, mentally, and emotionally when I'm living in Thailand. It's just a better quality of life for me. Thailand's not for everyone. It kind of takes a explorer mindset and getting out of the comfort zone and that's not for everyone, but it is definitely for me. On that note, everyone, I'm going to say farewell and see you on the next video. Hi, Tom. Hi, Tom.